YBM had been doing a remarkable religious work here in this country to enlighten the public and to wipe out misconceptions and wrong interpretations and also to create some sort of awakening among the Buddhist community in this country. We really appreciate the effort made by mostly young Buddhists. Tonight, you have invited me to talk on the origin of the man. This is a very big problem. Up to the end of this world, we go on discussing, arguing this subject. But what? Okay. No. Hmm. What is she doing? Right. Let us start. Just now I told you we will never come to any conclusion regarding this question. The whole world is divided into three groups regarding this issue. One group says man and the world and everything were created by a God. Easy to understand, there is nothing to study. Very simple. Another group says, this existence of life and the world is coincidentally taken place, not planned or created by anybody. And there is no first cause for that. Mostly rationalist, scientists, free thinkers, and so many other thinkers believe there is no cause, there is no reason, just exist. Although religious people give different interpretations according to their belief, then another group, that is Buddhism. Buddhism says there is no beginning at all. Uh, these are the three groups. One group says everything is created by a God. Another group says there is nobody to create but just exist and disappear. But the Buddha says there is no beginning. Now let us discuss why it is necessary for us to find out whether there is any beginning or not. The Buddha asked this question. When somebody came and posed this question to the Buddha, he asked, why do you want to know this? What do you gain by knowing whether there is a beginning or not? Do you think that knowledge can contribute for you to lead a religious life? Do you think you can discipline your mind to be religious, to be noble, to see the end of your suffering by knowing the beginning of your life and the world? Ah, these are the arguments. Then the Buddha says, your duty is to understand what this life is. Then there are various other discourses such as Agganya Sutta, Brahmajala Sutta, 
and many others. The Buddha had to touch upon regarding this subject because his way of discussing religious subjects depend on the mentality, the understanding capacity, intelligence, emotions. He considered all these mental attitudes before he answered. That is why he had to keep quiet when certain Christians were put to the Buddha. Because he knew the questioner cannot understand the answer, create more confusion if he said something. To those who can understand, then he has explained. What is the interpretation given by the Buddha in Agganya Sutta regarding the beginning of this world and the life. Because some people believe that the Buddha did not say anything about the beginning of life or the world. He says, this world cycle one world cycle, one world system. Take only this particular planet or globe. Divide it into four periods. Existence, decaying, dissolution, and emptiness. These are the four period. Today we exist. The world exists. Universes exist, not only one universe. Few thousand years ago many people had no knowledge about the other world system. To them this is the whole world, whole universe. They concentrated only about this life and this world. That is why they say at once this world and this life were created by a creator. S. G. Wells, a well-known historian, regarded as very highly intellectual personality. He says, we were taught that this world was created about six to seven thousand years ago. But when you study geology or geography, we can understand it has taken millions of years for this globe to cool down, to settle down. Then few more millions of years for life to originate. Therefore, how can we believe that everything was created about six to seven thousand years ago. Uh, this is his argument. Then Burton Russell, supposed to be a well-known philosopher in the West, he does not like any religion. He hates every religion agnostic. He says, there is no reason whatsoever for us to find out 
there is a beginning here in this world. If we try to point out a beginning that shows our poor imagination regarding this world, again he says, amongst the founders of all those religions, I respect only one man. He is the Buddha. Why do I respect him? He is the only one who did not make false statement about the origin of this world. But all the others said something about the beginning. It shows how poor their understanding capacity about this world. Therefore, I respect the Buddha. Now, this is the way how they define. He also says, people believe that this world and this life were created by someone, created by God. According to my understanding, actually, this world was not created by a god. This world was created by a devil when God was looking somewhere else. <laughs> if God knew that devil is going to create this world like this, God doesn't allow. Such a miserable, horrible, life and the world. A preacher, <clears throat> when he was giving a talk about the beginning of this world, he started his talk at the beginning when God started to create heaven and earth. Then suddenly somebody got up and asked, May I know what was he doing before he started to create heaven and earth? <laughs> it's not an e easy question to answer. Then the speaker said, I think at that time he was creating hell for those who ask this kind of questions. <laughs> because there is no answer to this question. <laughs> so, uh, still I did not explain how the Buddha has defined and analyzed the world into four periods. Now we are experiencing worldly condition, worldly life, pleasant and unpleasant feeling. Throughout our life, we are struggling for our survival. But we are not happy. We do not know why we are here in this world. We do not know why we are not happy with this life and with this world. We do not know where the mistake is. Uh, that is called ignorance. We are all ignorant, including me. Don't think we are wise. That is called ignorance. It is due to lack of this understanding we create our own imaginations. Some people say, we must suffer. Without suffering, we cannot go to heaven. Why is it necessary to suffer? If there is anybody to create us, if his mission, if his wish is to send us to heaven, 
then what is the difficulty for him to create us at once in heaven? Instead of allowing us to suffer like this, there must be something. Now these are the arguments. That is why many people cannot satisfy with all sorts of interpretation, definitions that many religions try to contribute as beginning of life and the world. Buddhism is known as a scientific religion. Why it is known as scientific religion? Whenever scientists discover anything, any new discoveries, when we compare their discoveries with the science, there is no contradiction with the Buddha's teaching. But you can find a lot of contradiction with Buddhism. I have to define the difference between the Buddha's teachings and Buddhism. Buddhism is organized by us, not by the Buddha. According to our satisfaction, According to our way of thinking, according to our traditions and customs and culture and way of life, we organize a religion. And in that religion, <coughs> you can find the Buddha's teachings also. Uh, that is called Buddhism. Now, I am talking directly about the Buddha's teaching, not about Buddhism. What is recorded in the basic teachings of the Buddha? But in Buddhism, you can find so many books, commentaries, sub-commentaries, written by Buddhist writers, Buddhist scholars, there you can find a lot of conflicts, contradictions, misinterpretations. That is why they are divided into different schools. They have different concepts, different beliefs. But even then, the basic teachings still remain there. Sometimes we feel the difficulty of finding what are the basic teachings of the Buddha and what are the interpretations given by different masters and scholars and writers. So it has become a concoction of various belief and tradition. Then, in Agganya Sutta, the Buddha says, first period, the world come into existence. Then how does it come into existence? Who is responsible for that? Whether there is anybody to plan this? According to the Buddha, there is no body. There is no end of the world cycle and universes, infinite. World systems always exist in this universe. Life always exists in this universe. That is why it is difficult to find out the beginning of a life. I can give a simple example. Can you ask one glass of water? 
Now you want to find out a beginning of a river. You go on surveying, climbing hills and rocks and mountains and found out the water dripping from the bottom of a rocks or the mountain. Now uh, that is the beginning of a river. Later, turn into a river. Then you found out the beginning of the river. You satisfy. Then some others say, this is not the beginning of this river. Then they realize the accumulated water on the top of the hill or the rocks dripping. So this is not the beginning. Bottom is not the beginning. The top is the beginning. Then some others say, we cannot believe that this is the beginning. And how this water accumulated there on the top of the rock or the hill. Then they realize rain water. Rain water is responsible for that. That is the beginning of the river. Then some others ask, how this rain water originated? <laughs> Scientifically you analyze combinations of this and that, you have your own interpretation. And we can understand the sunlight, evaporated water, again mix up with the cloud and converted and with the combinations of all these words, oxygens and this and that, drop. Then the water taken from the same river, evaporated from the same river, again can come back through this channel. Now we are at the beginning of the river. We had to come back to the same river as the origin of this river. Think for a while. That is why the Buddha says, life cycle, wheel of existence. There is no beginning. It is a wheel, goes one round, and whatever we discovered as origin can become the end. Whatever we discovered as the end can become the origin. Beginning. So when you refer to Albert Einstein's relativity, Two thousand five hundred years ago, Buddha has given a better explanations about relativity. When you study Paticca Samuppada, dependent upon origination, he has explained the twelve link, how one depends on the other. All are interrelated. It is impossible for anything to exist in this world without depending on something else. Take different shape, different size, different color, due to various other factors, sources, thousands and millions of other sources, we do not know. Uh, this is the nature of existence. Life exists like this because of the combinations of so many elements 
energies, then divided into two, mind and matter. Mind analyzed again into four mental energies, four mental faculties. People know only about mind, but they do not know how to analyze the nature of the mental energy. Feeling, perception, mental tendencies, mental habits, based on good and bad karmic energies, habits, consciousness, four mental faculties contribute separately, again joined together. Then four energies, solidity, fluidity, heat, motion, four elements, all are energies. Elements also start from energies. Matter or element is known as crystallized energy. When energy is crystallized, turn into matter or elements. So originated from energies. Uh, this is the combinations of all these energies and elements. Then where is the binding factor? Who is the person who molded this one? Uh, that is what many people cannot understand. And the Buddha has given the interpretation. The main reason is nothing but our own craving for existence, craving for pleasure, craving for non-existence. There are three kinds of craving. If you can understand the nature of these three kinds of craving that we maintain, there is no reason for us to blame either God or devils when we are in trouble. Craving for existence is very, very grave, deeply rooted, even at the cost of millions of others' life, one person tries to save his or her own life, craving for existence. By adapting any kind of crooked, vulgar, wicked, dangerous method, people can do anything for their survival. That is called craving for existence. craving for pleasure. We like to indulge our six senses. We have become slaves to our own senses. We have forgotten the purpose of our life is not indulgence, or sensual pleasure. The fleeting nature of pleasure creates more worries, more disturbances, excitement, disappointment, frustration. This is the nature of pleasure. Whole world is a battlefield today because of this. Human beings, Animals, all, are fighting, killing each other because of this craving, not because of God or devil. Craving for non-existent, then you can ask, how can we interpret this as a craving? This craving is more 
strong than the other two. When we experience intolerable, unbearable disappointment, miseries and worries and disappointment, we decide to commit suicide. Craving for non-existence. Is it not craving? It is called unsatisfied craving. When you could not satisfy your craving, you had no courage to tolerate, to face. Then you decide to commit suicide. Craving for non-existence. Another interpretation. Those who strongly believe this is the only life, there is nothing hereafter. We don't believe there will be anything either heaven or hell or anything. That is also craving for non-existence. Now these are the three causes, main reasons given by the Buddha as main cause of our existence. And we existed. We are the result of what we were. Think. That we will be the result of what we are. The Buddha says. In Dhammapada, the first answer. Pleasant and unpleasant experience, miserable or favorable or pleasant life, fortunate or unfortunate life, we experience due to our previous activities, how we have used our mind our word, our action during our previous birth. And this life is molded according to our mentality, our way of life, purity or impurity of our mind. So this life becomes miserable or pleasurable life due to our previous existence. Not because of the original sin. There is no such thing as original sin. Every day we are sinning. <laughs> there is no such thing as original sin. I will explain this later. Then, Scientific analysis of the existence of the world today, Sunday mail, there is an article written by a Muslim from Penang, Buddhism and Science. Directly he has pointed out how Buddhism can agree with science. Please try to read that article. Scientists also believe the existence of matters and elements and the world and life, everything originated from atom. Again, they analyze this Electron, neutron, proton, this ton, that ton, there are tons of tons now. <laughs> Later they will discover so many other tons also. There are many unknown things in this world. Now, their analysis is this. Why world situation, world conditions and the uh, climates and everything are slowly going on changing in this world. 
many people experience in, in many parts of the world. Everything is going on changing. This is proton started to fade away. Combinations of electron, proton, neutron balance everything for the existence smoothly. When one of these items cannot balance, cooperate with the others, lot of changes take place. When one particular energy started to fade away, then the others also slowly, slowly, slowly start to decay. This is scientific analysis. Now let us refer to the Buddha. What he has said this 2,500 years ago. He said, combinations take place due to these four elements and four mental energies about life. And other things like plants and so many other things, there we cannot find those mental faculties. But you can find so many kind of energies and elements. Let us take plant life. Now if we suffer today sicknesses, old age, worries and death due to our original sin, then what about the plant life? You can see sicknesses in plant life also. You can see old age in plant life. You can see decay. You can see death. Do you think that plant also suffer due to original sin? <laughs> uh, this is called natural occurrence. That is what the Buddha pointed out. Nobody else is responsible for our problems and decaying and death. For our existence, our own craving is responsible. So, these energies, at the beginning all our energies, no matters, later converted into matters and elements. Got fantastic magnetic powers that we cannot understand. The first world system that which existed completely disintegrated, dissolved, disappeared. But not the whole universe, please remember this. There is nobody to destroy this world. It is natural. But today, the behavior of mankind, the mentality of human beings, and the danger and selfishness and cruelty and cunningness in the man's mind, I think if there is anybody to destroy this world, neither God nor devil but man, he is the one who can destroy this world. He is so dangerous, so poisonous. Human mind is such. We use religion <coughs> only for the name's sake. In fact, today we use religion just to argue and fight. Not to cultivate man's way of life not for the spiritual development, not for the discipline, not for the mental purity, to gain more power, worldly power, political power, gain more income, to be very rich. Real essence of religion from every religion, including Buddhism. No more, actually speaking. We use religion only for the namesake. Mind is corrupted, polluted, 
We blame God, we blame devil. We are very clever. We make mistake, we blame devil. <laughs> so, all those dispersed particles from the, the world cycle which existed, which was dissolved and disintegrated, after some time, again start to accumulate all these molecules and disperse particles, then the energies. Then the formation again take place. We do not know how many millions or billions or trillions of years. We can incalculable. Now this is the way how Buddha has explained. After this formation, again, it will take many more millions of years to settle down everything. That is what S.G. Wells says. Now that is the second period. Then the third period, everything is favorable. Life is originated, and so many other things, not only life. Uh, this is the third period. After this, the fourth period, as scientists have discovered, start to decay. Going on decaying, 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 decaying. Nobody in this world who can stop this. It is natural. Then again come to an end. Dissolutions and no more. This particular world, world cycle, but so many others exist. So just now I told you, the Buddha's interpretations of the beginning of the world a start from there, but that is not the beginning. Reappearance, life reappears, world cycle reappears, but many others exist, and they are also under the universal law of impermanence suns and the moons and galaxies and so many other universes also under the same impermanency, not permanent. The Buddha says in another discourse, <coughs> there are thousands of suns, thousands of moons. People laugh at him when he said like this. We have got thousands. Now this is our mentality. And today, astronomers, scientists have discovered, yes, there are many suns and many moons. They have seen some of them. In Dhamma Chakra Sutta, Mahasamaya Sutta, in these discourses, you can see this word, Dasa Sahasi Loka Dhatu. Ten thousand world system, living beings of ten thousand world system. He mentioned this on many occasions, but people could not understand. Today, scientists also strongly believe, but still they could not prove that there are living beings, definitely they do exist in various other planets. One day they may discover. When the Buddha said earlier, people could not believe. That is why I told you, whatever they discover, they come closer to the Buddha, what he has said. And then we realize, oh yes, what the Buddha has said is true. Otherwise, we cannot understand. Now, 
the origin of life, human life. Uh, that is the biggest problem now. How this life was originated? When this world was empty. In Agganya Sutta, it is mentioned, when everything is favorable here on this earth, two Brahmas from another planet in Brahma realm, Devas and Brahmas, they are called supernatural living beings, they do exist. Two of them, they have some sort of miraculous power, travel in the air and all sort of luminous bodies. When this, so there is something here, for curiosity's sake, they wanted to come down, two of them. Then, do you know their way of life? They do not take a solid food, just like human beings or animals. Some of those devas or brahmas, satisfaction, that is emotional satisfaction, not happiness, excitement, can create so many other problems later. One example, if you touch the first price of social welfare lottery tomorrow, you take this as happiness, isn't it? There is no happiness, my dear friend. First thing, as, as you saw, the number starts shivering. <laughs> ah, see, wonderful happiness, shivering. <laughs> Why? Fear. Now life is in danger. <laughs> then tell, please don't tell others. <laughs> is that the nature of happiness? Hide. He goes away and hides somewhere. Now he is thinking what to do with this money. How to withdraw without others' knowledge. That man cannot sleep now. <laughs> Assume he could manage to gain the whole amount without facing many problems. You cannot understand what sort of problem he has to face. Worries and fear and insecurity and tension, uncertainty, that is not happiness. That is called pleasure. Happiness is entirely a different thing. When there is no fear, in our mind, we experience happiness. When there is no suspicion about our life, happiness is there. When we have no grace, crazy attitude toward many things, contentment is there. That is called happiness. So those devas, having seen the uncertainty impermanency, unsatisfactoriness of this fleeting nature of pleasure calmed their senses. Complete contentment they experience in their life. That is called happiness. But their happiness also impermanent because they have not eradicated their ignorance, illusions, degree, although they have curtailed certain degree of their craving, uh, still remain in the mind. At any moment, this craving under certain circumstances can flare up. So what happened to these two? When they came down and settled down here, not settled down, just for curiosity's sake, they wanted to see what it is. Then they experienced very 
tempting aroma. The cream of the earth, better than durian ice creams <laughs> to them. So what they did, and tasted a little bit, wonderful taste. Then they developed their craving. After eating this, the hidden craving flare up. Because of this craving, they have lost their so-called miraculous power. They could not go back. They tried and tried, could not go back. Later, all the other defilements, mental impurities also started to develop because of this craving. Then jealousy, anger, grudge, enmity, and all the other evil forces, because all the other evil forces appear in our mind because of our craving. If there is no craving, fear never appear in our mind. Enmity or jealousy never appear in our mind if there is no craving. They have lost their original identity. Uh, later, because of these mental impurities in their mind, they were crazy for pleasure. Uh, then, naturally, male and female organs also originated. From, they were free from sex. After that, they started to produce. Uh, that is the story given in Agganya Sutta in the Buddha's teaching. But research scholars, very highly intellectuals, after studying this story, says, what this Buddhist scholars have done by taking the Buddha's teaching, they have narrated, illustrated a story, mythological st a story, for people to understand how this life was originated. I'll tell you later what it is. Now let us come back to Adam and Eve to see whether there is any difference between these two and Adam and Eve. That story also tells us God created Adam and Eve to live forever and later the devil appear and influence them, created temptation that is craving for them to eat that forbidden fruit. I cannot understand why he created this forbidden fruit. Today we are suffering because of that apple. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, now we can compare these two stories similarities there. We should not take this illustration in gross form. Take the concept that the Christian concept of origin and the Buddhist concept of origin is the same. If we can forget the story, what is the origin? Craving. Christians also say, but unfortunately they have invited devils to do that. Devil created the temptation. Buddhism never talk anything about devil. That is intrinsic on hidden craving because we existed earlier. Because that is not the first life. Now see the difference now. So there is no reason for us to argue or attack or criticize or condemn by studying the illustrations. Take only concept. 
So Christians, Muslims and Hindus also accept that craving is the main cause for all our suffering. So according to them, if they have not taken that fruit, their life become eternal. No sickness, no old age. But Buddhism says, there is neither beginning nor end. Different forms of life exist in universes. Universes are infinite. In Anguttara Nikaya, the Buddha says this, Anamatagoyam bhikkave samsaro pubba koti napanyayati. Ah, this is the beautiful saying. Don't waste your valuable time to study the beginning of life. Just now I divided the whole world system into four periods. But that is not the beginning. Reappearance. I see the difference now. Then the Buddha says, We are deluded, blindfolded, misled by our own ignorance. Therefore, we cannot understand, we cannot find out the beginning of anything. On the other hand, there is no beginning. This is a circle. End of one thing becomes the beginning of another thing. That is how existence takes place. Then which one is the beginning? Because when we go one round like this, there is no beginning. Then, the Buddha has given us a warning not to waste our life in searching the beginning of life and the beginning of world. After spending our whole life, we stop somewhere thinking this is the beginning, just to tell others that is the beginning. What do we gain by creating that imagination? What is the purpose of our life? Do you think that knowledge can contribute anything for us to see the end of our suffering? To see the end of our sicknesses and worries and problems? To see the end of our death and miseries? Never. Then why do we want to know about all these things? For nothing. So in future, we should not argue regarding these things. Then, life. Life, this is not a life. This body is not our life. This is only a structure, a frame. Life is an energy, and this is the house for that life to exist for a short period. Many others interpret this as Atma or soul or spirit or self. So whatever word they use. From the Buddhist point of view, there is no such permanent entity that which can settle down anywhere in any part of the universe. This definitely creates some sort of disappointment in your mind. Why? Because of that craving for existence, what I mentioned earlier. You need something uh, that is called craving. So as long as you maintain this craving, you cannot get rid of your suffering you cannot get rid of your unsatisfactoriness of your existence. Otherwise, this can become a dream. Now, another discovery. 
theory of evolution, Charles Darwin, we think that he has discovered the beginning of our life. <coughs> it is a scientific theory. Buddhism can agree with this. But Charles Darwin discovery is only one-way traffic. Buddhism is not one-way traffic. Now, now you can see the difference again. He has discovered the evolution, how changes or the formation have taken place from that amoeba which originated in the water and up to this level. He is right. We cannot say he is wrong. Of course, those who believe that God created this human life in his image, rejected theory of evolution for many years, they had a losing battle for long time. In the end, what they did, they twisted and changed the period. Now they also accept, but Buddhism had no friction with theory of evolution. But Buddhism has gone beyond Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Buddhism starts where Charles Darwin started his discovery and Buddhism has gone beyond from there. How? He says one cell, life, amoeba, was originated in the water, then went on developing, 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 evolving, changing. Today we stand as human beings. This is not a new discovery. Indian philosophers have discovered few thousand years before Charles Darwin. They have given wonderful interpretation in this way. It is written in Sanskrit. Matsya kurmo varahascha nrasingho cha vamana Rama, Rama, Chasa, Krishna, Baudha, Kalki. Ten incarnations of God. Beautifully. This is evolution. So according to Hinduism, there is a creator God. This is not a new discovery discovered by Christians or Muslims. Thousands of years ago in India, they believe Mahabrahma create a God. So others also borrowed from them, actually speaking. The Buddha is the only one who did not borrow this. So to them there is Mahabrahma. Create a God. Then Vishnu, Brahma Vishnu, Ishwara, three Murti just like Trinity in Christianity. Three Murti, Brahma, Vishnu, Isra. Brahma is the creator, Vishnu is the protector who looks after creation. Then Ishara, the one, one day when he gets angry, he burns everything. People are scared of Ishara now. Three God. Then they say, God appear on this earth from time to time by taking different form that is called incarnate. First time after the appearance of this earth, God appear as Matsya, a fish. Now see what Charles Darwin said. 
first time God appeared as a fish in the water. That is the first life. Again, you see, after sometimes again, the God appear on this earth as kurma, turtle. Turtles can live in the water as well as on the earth. That is the evolution, development of that life which was originated in the water. Then, they say, Varaha, the third time God appeared in this world as a pig, four-legged animal who live on this earth. So animal life was originated, appearance of God. <coughs> Fourth time he appeared as nursing. Nara means human being, Singha means lion, half animal, half human. Human body, human head, animal body. People believe thousands or millions of years ago, there were, existed such living beings on this earth, half human, half animal. So Hinduism says, God appeared on this earth in this form. Fifth time again he appeared. Vamana. Dog. Very short. Just like small child. But no development of the physical structure or the muscles. Appearance of God in human form. After that again he appeared because he need environment, worldly conditions and so many other things for these kind of living beings to exist. That is why it has taken such a long period for God to appear from time to time by taking different then the next one, Parasurama, well developed physical body, very rough and tough, not very cultured, always carry an axe as a weapon. Now this is called well developed human body but not cultured. After that, Rama. When you study Hinduism, you can say every Hindu respect, worship Rama. Rama is very cultured, civilized, intelligent and regarded as, at that time they regarded him as reincarnation of God, they realized this. But purity of his mind, a spiritual development is not that advanced. Then appear again another one, Krishna. Uh, Krishna is the most famous, most powerful reincarnation of God according to Hindu or Indian philosophy. Further development. Then they say, ninth incarnation is the Buddha. Further development. Uh, that is called fully enlightened person, supreme enlightened wisdom, further development, reincarnations of God according to Hinduism, but not according to Buddhism. Then they say, before the end of this world cycle, they too believe one day, naturally, 
there will be an end to this world system. And before the end of this world cycle, God appear again once more. That is the last appearance within this world cycle. That is called Kalki. So here there is another important point. Hinduism says there will be another saviour or God or incarnation of God appear before the end of this world. Christianity also says second coming of Jesus. I still got hope. Don't give up hope. So that is Christianity may disappear but Jesus come back again. Now this is Christian. Buddhism also says something else similar to this. He says in certain world cycle only one or two Buddhas appear. Buddhas are very, very rare. Becoming a Buddha is the most difficult task in this world. But today you can create any number of Buddhas. Is <laughs> your own production. So, he says, we human beings are very fortunate who are born within this world cycle. Four Buddhas already appeared from time to time. Akkusanda, Konagama, Kasyapa, Gautama, Sakyamuni Buddha. Four Buddhas have served us, enlightened us, and paved the path or the way for us to find out our salvation. They have done this. And before the end of this world cycle, another Buddha will appear. But nobody to send this Buddha to this world, neither Buddha or God. They must work to become a Buddha. Their own effort, their own development, their own mental purity. Another person cannot create a Buddha. So the, the name of this Buddha is Maitre. Then this Buddha also preach the same doctrine, same teaching, discourse, explained, expounded by the other Buddhas, previous Buddha. They have no different doctrines, different teaching, same doctrine. And now you can see the similarity again. So, <coughs> Charles Darwin's discovery from amoeba, only elemental side, developments of elements, life process, but he had no idea whatsoever about mental process. The development and changes and the evolutions of mental process. Now, Buddhism explained this. Why different forms, different shape take place from time to time according to our mentality, mental process. When we abuse our human intelligence by misusing our human life, by abusing our human dignity. What will happen? We can become more fortunate to have four legs in the next birth. Today only two. In the next birth we may get four legs. Uh, that is the evolution. So, Charles Darwin explains only evolution. The Buddhism explains devolutions also, both ways. 
Once we go on developing, 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 cultivating, before we reach our final goal, if we abuse and misuse this human mind, again goes down and down and down. Then go another big round. Uh, this is called the nature of existence, evolution from the Buddhist point of view. Yes, we started about 20 minutes to 8, isn't it? Now, 9 o'clock. I think better to stop. <laughs> if there is no beginning of the life and the world. <laughs> we can discuss further. Pardon? Yes. Thank you very much for your indulgence. Avijja Patya, Sankhara, Sankhara Patya, Vijnanam, Vijnana Patya, Namarupam. Twelve links, the development of human life started from the consciousness. When we die, just now I told you we have four mental faculties. In the end, when we are going to die, all these faculties become one human consciousness. And this consciousness transmits from here. When it is transmitted, the elements completely disintegrate, again join with the original forms of elements. But the departed consciousness has nothing to do with the elements that we had earlier. Although we try to preserve our dead bodies and do all sort of things only for the namesake, in reality, there is no connection whatsoever with the element. But this departed consciousness, uh, here the Buddha says, Vijnanam matukuchismin okkamati. This is in Sangyutta Nikaya Sutra Pitaka. This departed consciousness again absorbed into cosmic energies. So many known and unknown cosmic energies are here. Then join with the element. After transmission. And when it is transmitted, straight away, settle down this transmitted consciousness in the mother's womb. Matu kuchisming, mother's womb. That mother's womb can become a test tube also. No difference. Everywhere you can see test tube. So, maybe dustbin, different forms of life. According to the mental attitude, a man who led his life as an animal by abusing human intelligence, no chance of getting back another human form because he abused. So the formation takes place according to his mentality. Then development takes place gradually. And the ingredients, potential, all the energies are there in infancy stage at the beginning. Then, according to the mental habits, mental tendencies, how we have developed our life during our previous birth, same intelligence, same talents, abilities, a skill, knowledge, understanding, very easily we can continue in the next birth. Uh, this is called mental tendencies. So now you can see, in one family, there are five children. One child is very intelligent, another child is stupid, another child is pretty, another one is very ugly, another one of them 
is very hot tempered another one is very sweet tempered another one is very very stingy another one is very generous who taught them who taught them to be like this from their childhood neither father nor mother can you say god created like this i don't believe then father and mothers are very religious minded but children are criminal minded <laughs> same blood same flesh remember father and mother cannot produce children please remember today father and mother cannot produce children father and mother act just like two wheels in a vehicle to bring them to this world and drop here now this is the truth they have their own identity own character own temperament own behavior in certain cases impossible to change this attitude that is their own parents are not religious minded very wicked some children are very religious minded uh, this is called previous mental habit so our intelligence and stupidity all these things depend on previous experience the buddha says we have six characters raga charita dosha charita moha charita buddha charita vitakka charita saddha charita six characters some are very romantic always sex life they can contribute everything for their sex life do you think there are no such people ah uh, that is their mentality they can spend millions of dollars for that some others very hot temper from childhood very hot temper one or two words are more than enough to flare up their anger and create a lot of troubles and by nature then some are very stupid and ignorant cannot understand things properly very narrow minded by nature some are very intelligent I remember a few days ago a 6 years old a girl came and asked one question Can you tell me what is the most precious thing in this world this girl And I said there are so many things it's very difficult for me to tell you then she told do you know the most precious thing here in this world is love <laughs> then i asked there are many kinds of love what type of love and then she told me love between father and mother husband and wife life start from there they are the one who take the responsibility for the whole family and other children if there is no love in between father and mother everything is gone can you imagine Six years old girl intelligent john stuart mill when he was 7 years old he started to write world history in england previous habit child prodigies mental prodigies by nature so people can discover many more things in time to come scientific discovery that is what the buddha says 
You should not surrender yourself even to your own karma. To me, actually it makes no difference if anyone say what to do, this is our karma, we had to face this. And some others say what to do, this is will of God. Both are in the same boat. No difference. But the Buddha said, if you use your intelligence, your effort, your knowledge, you can topple your own karma that you have committed. That means you know how to develop your way of life to avoid the effect of certain bad deeds that you have committed but not by worshipping or praying or offering or reciting anything, but by behaving wisely. Use your full effort and intelligence. Ah, see, what sort of credit the Buddha has given to human intelligence. So this intelligence is remarkable. At the moment, our knowledge about so many things in this world is very, very limited. Our senses are very limited. Our mind is understanding capacity is limited. But when we completely eradicate illusions, ignorance and defilements from the mind, this is called spiritual development. The main purpose of a religion is for that, not for anything else to cleanse the mind from all the dirts, all the defilement, mental impurities. If you cannot do this, religion is useless. So now you can understand why some people are very intelligent to discover so many things because of their previous habits, development of their mind. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, there's no problem. I think you can challenge. <laughs> you better try to become a Buddha and break all the records. <laughs> <laughs> there is nobody to stop this. <laughs> What Buddhists believe, fourth edition will be out very soon. I increase 100 pages this time. And there I mention why population increase. And you ask this question from an unmarried man. I must ask this question from a married man, why population increase? <laughs> Who is responsible for that? <laughs> well, if we are talking of rebirth, there must be people. I know. For the rebirth, so maybe we can only. I know yeah, the nature of your question. Uh, this is the the limited knowledge in our mind regarding this universe and world system. We think here the same people die and being born, reborn again, going on round and round the same limited number of human beings. Today, uh, very soon, there will be 5,000 million, very soon, not yet completed, very soon, 5,000 million. And you believe these 5,000 million going round and round like merry-go-round. It is not like this. Just now I mentioned in the Buddha's teaching, he mentioned only 10,000 world cycle where living beings exist. And one day when he was walking along the sea beach, not sea beach, a river. No, no sea around that area where the Buddha lived. <laughs> he has 
taken so much of sand into his hand and showed to his disciples. Now you can understand the limited of the sand in my hand. And the amount of sand remained along this, the bank of the river. Yes. And the knowledge that we have about the world system is only this much. And unknown ones is just like the, the sands along the sea beach. Uh, this is called the nature of the Buddha's enlightenment. He is called Loka Vidu. Knower of the world means he can understand the endless infinite world cycle and universes which others could not understand. So, living beings appear in this world, uh, this is the important answer to this question. When the situation, the favorable condition, medical facilities, food, environment, when all these things are favorable, more and more life exists in that particular planet. If these facilities are not available here, they exist somewhere else in another planet. So today, population increase because of the medical facilities. Those days when you know, disaster, volcanic eruption, flood, fire, epidemic, thousands, millions of people die. But today, within few hours, few days, government can arrest all these things by using modern equipment, modern facilities, and medical facilities. Uh, that is the main reason why population increase. Religion has nothing to do with it. Religion cannot produce people. Hmm? Now, what is your question? What do you mean by that? It's a smarter. Everyone not only today, during the Buddha's time, how many? <laughs> Why only today? Those monks who were staying in the same monastery with the Buddha, all sort of dirty things that they have done, if you read the Vinaya Pitaka, you can understand. These monks are better than those monks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Buddha was about to pass